the Wednesday night round table. Myself and Pastor Joey Reagan are going to be with you tonight, and we are going to go into the book of Ephesians. We've decided we're going to go line by line, verse by verse. We are going to mine the riches of the book of Ephesians. The one thing that we've noticed all through the book of Ephesians is the phrase, in him or in Christ. All of our blessings are in him or in Christ. And so that's the title of our series that we're going into is In Him. So for the next few weeks, Brother Joey and myself, we will be bringing out all of this good, rich gospel material from the book of Ephesians. We are just so thankful that you're here to join us tonight. You can join us in person here at 7 p.m. at Stony Run, or you can watch online, and you can watch it at your convenience. You can watch a replay anytime. But we just pray that this ministry will bless you and teach you some incredible truths of Christ. And remember that the greatest truth that we need to know is that we need to be in him because all of the blessings are contained in Christ. God bless you and have a good night. All right. Amen. Good evening, Amen. everyone. Well, we're glad y'all come out on this rainy night tonight. Amen. We got all the back rows full. <laughs> every, every back row in the house is full, so it's all back row, back row tonight. We're, we're thankful that you come out tonight with us. It's a lot, it's a lot better with you here than it Amen. is without you here. So we are. I thought excited. I smelled for a second. That's why they moved so oh, far. Oh, is that what it was, back. Joey? We need to work on our hygiene a little yes. bit. And, you know, <laughs> try to. We're really excited about Ephesians tonight. We're going to get into chapter four. Amen. So, um, and and we're looking through this, and remember, this whole idea of the series is in Him. My friend out here has a license plate that says, I am in him. Amen. Amen. That's, that's where we need to be. We need to be in Christ. We need to walk in him and have our being in him and, and understand that that's where the, the fullness um, of God uh, resides at. Right. Amen. We were just talking about that last week about Paul's prayer that they might be filled with all the fullness of God. Well, if you're not in him, you can't have the fullness of God. Amen. So we, we, need, to, <laughs> we need to definitely go there. Um, Brother Joey, why don't you catch us up on some of our... Uh, Current events, Good different deal. things are going on. Yes, sir. Hey, so, guys, coming up here at Stony Run, this Saturday is our men's ministry, um, June the 6th. Uh, it's going to be at Blackman Grove, PFWB, on Timothy Road at 8 a.m. Yeah. Uh, so, men, come join us at, at this uh, this Saturday morning. Brother Shelton's um, going to bring a word for us. Brother so, Shelton will be speaking. So we're excited about that. Um, Amen. That's Good actually our, our volunteer of the month, Shelton Amen. Rogers. So. We are volunteering him to speak Saturday morning. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I know he'll bring a good word. Yes, yeah, sir. That's right. That's right. Um, so we're, we're excited about that. Yes, sir. So this Sunday also is our graduation Sunday celebrating our uh, college and high school graduates. Um, guys, come out. Join us this Sunday. Yes. Uh, it'll be a good time for celebration. Um, this is a, a, a big change in, uh, in their lives. Moving on, moving up. Um, from high school to college and college to the working force. Amen. I mean, this is this is definitely, they need prayer. They need lifting up. Um, right. So come and join us. Let's and lift you're going to bring us a fresh word. So Amen. We're, we're looking forward to that. Brother Joey's going to bring us something awesome. I pray, so, yes, sir. Yeah. I, I'm trusting in God in that one. Um, I'll be praying. I, I, I'll go ahead and, and name it. Don't dim your light. Don't dim your Don't light. Don't dim your light. I so, like that. Um, Don't dim your light. The Rena. lights may dim tonight. I hear the thunder. <laughs> out there, so it's all the so light. It may, too, it may so. get dim here in a second. Um, hopefully know. not too much. But uh, yeah, guys, this is an exciting weekend. But uh, also coming up next Saturday, the June the twelfth um, is our summer bash. Inviting everyone to come out. Uh, you don't have to have kids. Just come out and have a good time. We'll have some food, uh, hamburgers. We'll have some uh, a big slide, twenty eight foot water slide we'll for our kids. Out. Um, uh, obstacle course, color war. Guys, come out. If you're coming to have fun, wear something you don't mind getting dirty or wet. Uh, bring a towel, extra chair, yes. uh, pa uh, pair of clothes, some chairs. Um, uh, we want to have a good um, time fellowship as well. See, she's already helping us. She's queuing all the stuff up. Amen. Us. Also, June 13th, um, next Sunday. Yeah, is 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. is our communion service. Yes, yes. Uh, join us out for that. Guys, this is something that God has called us to do. Not just go through the mere, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, just not to go through it, but it actually right. sit down and realize what, he's called us to break bread together, yes. to, to yes. remember him. Um, join us next Sunday on uh, the 13th at 6 p.m. that evening here yes. at Sony Run. Um, also coming up, CYC sign up. Oh, I missed something, I'm sorry. CYC sign up. It, um, it's going on right now. They have four uh, four weeks of fun, guys. They're ready for us. 
Um, this year, of course, COVID is around. They have some restrictions. They'll let you know what's going on, the changes they've made. Um, I'm excited for that. Also, VBS, June the 28th through July 2nd. Treasured. Miss Brenna has got a, a great uh, time planned out for us. Yes. Um, she's still looking for some volunteers. We still need some group leaders. Or we got, we got everybody. Got Hallelujah. God provided, as always. Um, so listen, sign your kids up. Can we do that yet or no? Are they signing up online? Yes. Okay. She's yes. going to post a link later, so we'll All share right. that everywhere we can, guys. So look out for that tonight to sign your kids up. Um, come and join us that week. Um, also, our mission spotlight for this month, for the month of June, it's going to be, I had to pull up on my phone, but I lost it, Lifeline of Sampson County. This is a pregnancy center located in Sampson County, guys. They provide pregnancy testing, verification options, counseling, uh, uh, limited ultrasound, community referrals, and educational classes for women and men in Sampson, Duplin, and surrounding counties. This is, this is a time, guys, this is a way yes. you can help out. That's right. We, we, we talk about all these things that happen. happen uh, we don't want abortion. That's we, right. Then if we don't want abortion, then this is a way for you to help out. That's right. Um, guys, if you, you can't, out of one side of your mouth, say abortion is bad, but yet out of the other side, don't do anything. Right. Uh, we have to help provide a way out. Um, every life is cherished, is cherished by God. That's it's right. something he loves. It's something that's it's part of his creation. Yes. And this is a way, this is a, a way we can help out. So every, every time you want to give, guys, give. Earmark it to our mission spotlight. This will go to them, and we're doing this for the whole month of June. Yes. Um, also, am I missing anything else, Pastor Rick? I don't I know if I am or not. I think that's it. I think you've about hit everything. Is our I women's ministry that. meeting? I thought I was told that. This yes. Meeting. And they're meeting with them. So, and oh, so yes. that's on the 12th, right? On June the 12th, they're meeting that with the leader of Life, Lifeline Sampson County yes. at 10 a.m. here at yes. Sony Road. So, guys, if you want to come hear more about that, our women, come out, let, talk to our ladies here, uh, Miss Suzanne, Miss Kim. Um, I know they can. Miss Danette as well. Guys, they want you here to be a big part of um, our ministry here through Stony Run. Absolutely. Um, if nothing else, let's get started yes, tonight because um, this is a rich word tonight, I it feel, is, is. Um, that Paul is giving to the church of Ephesus, and it's a word that can affect us and, and change us today. Yes. So I'll go ahead and lead us in prayer, right. Pastor Rick, yes, and um, <clears throat> we'll get started, yes. guys. Yes. Dear Lord Jesus, thank yes, you, God, thank for this you, opportunity that we yes. can come together tonight. We can praise yes. your name, Lord God, lift you, lift you high, exalt you, install you, Lord God, what you created us to do. Yes. Lord God, let us never ne neglect, Lord God, to give you praises, Amen. Lord Jesus. We have so much to be thankful for, Lord God, especially here in America, Lord God. As we just come off celebrate Memorial Day, for those who have died for us to have the right what we're doing now, Lord God, we need to give you praise. Yes. Lord God, so let us, let, us, let us remember that every time we close our eyes, every time yes. we, we get a time by ourselves, Lord God, when we're exciting and we're, we're enjoying our life, Amen. let us praise your name. Yes. Lord God, we pray for this word tonight, Lord God. We pray that, it, that what Paul is saying to this church of Ephesus, Lord God, it, it affects us. That's right. It's a calling on us as well, yes. what for us to do, yes. to walk out our, yes. our, our yes. faith, Lord Jesus. Yes. Let our faith produce a fruit of work, Lord God, that, yes. that goes out and it changes the world. Lord God, we pray for those who are battling sickness as well, Lord God, those who maybe can't lift their head tonight so sick. Lord God, those who are battling cancer, Lord God, have, have that doom and gloom. But Lord God, you, we're going to talk about tonight that hope that you give That's us, right. that one hope. That's right. Lord God, I, I'm just thankful for you. Yes. Lord God, bless us tonight. Open our eyes and our ears to receive your word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen, amen Brother Joey. Good, good word. Um, if you all want to open up to Ephesians chapter 4 tonight. I'm going to read the first six verses to get us going and jump in there, and then we'll, we'll go from there. We may go a little further tonight. We may not. I don't know. We'll just see where the Lord leads us tonight as we get into this. I don't like to rush through the Word. Amen. I feel like you got to let the Spirit have the opportunity to minister to you, and that you need to give Him some time. You need to allow the Spirit to, um, to work in your life, and, and you need to, to feel His presence and His power. And I think sometimes we rush through. Because we're, we're busy trying to accomplish something, maybe, but not allow God to accomplish something in us. So we need to, we need to make sure that we uh, allow the, the uh, Holy Spirit of God to, uh, to minister to us. So in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 1, it says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. 
There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. That's powerful. Uh, that's Amen. a mouthful is what it is. I mean, it's <laughs> it is, a yes, whole, sir. whole bunch there. But I, I, I wanted to kind of start out. First of all, I, when they, the way they, they, they translate this, but, but I, but I want to point this out to you. When it says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, really, you, that could very well be translated a prisoner in the Lord. I Amen. mean, because yes, the sir. of and in is kind of, you know, one of those things in Greek that it could be, it could be very well translated prisoner in the Lord. And I think that, that we all through the by all through the book of Ephesians, what by Paul is stressing that we are in the Lord. That, Amen. That he is Amen. in the Lord and you know, and all these things. And and so we want to remember that that Paul does everything because of his relationship with Jesus Christ. That should be our goal. I mean, that should be why we do what we do. We should do everything we do because of Jesus Christ. Not because someone told you this or someone told you that, but because of your relationship with him, I believe the Holy Spirit of God will give us the, the, um, the prodding, the, uh, the, you know, the push in the right direction Amen. To, to do what we're supposed to do. So everything we do, we do in the Lord. I mean, you know, everything, everything. And if we think of our life that way, Joey, I, I feel like that, that keeps us kind of in the right direction. Oh, yes, sir. I, I, I... To say he's a prisoner, I mean, really, he, yeah. he, he knew, well, this is the second time he mentions it in, in this book, okay? Uh, so he, he really knew what it was to be a prisoner of Rome, yeah. or to be prisoner of this world. Yeah. And, and he, he was trying to change that in, in, in our view of our walk with Christ and, and how we've been bought with a price. You know, I, you know I, I'm no longer my own. He knew that. He, he knew that he, he was no longer Paul. He was no That's longer right. a Jew. He was no longer a, 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 a Roman. He was a, a Christian, a follower yes. of Christ. Yes. So in Christ, like yes. Pastor Rick was saying, yes. he, he was a new, he was he's a prisoner of Christ, falling out where the Holy Spirit would lead him, falling where, even if it led to death, and he knew it would lead to death. Yes. I mean, at Anybody, this point, if you take the cross up, the cross leads to death. That's yes, where sir. it leads. You will die to yourself. To take up your cross. You've got to die to yourself to take up your cross and follow Christ. He's going to lead you in that direction. That's where you're going to go. You've got to die to yourself and follow him. And then that, then that can be, you know, difficult at times, but that's where we need to be. Amen. Um, he talks about being a prisoner. I was thinking about captivity. You know, when you're held in captivity. Yes, sir. You know, well, well Paul was captivated by Christ. Amen. I mean, he was absolutely just, that was something that, that had his complete and total attention, that that's who he was. It, it, when you looked at him, I, I, I would hope that when people look at us, that they would see someone that's a Christian, that they would see someone that is captivated Amen. by Christ, that they would look at us and say, man, they are, they are absolutely led by the Holy Spirit. They're being guided by the Holy Spirit. They, they are full of the Holy Spirit. That they, they, they do things because they love the Lord Jesus Christ and they're captivated by him. And so I think that we need to we need to make sure that that's that's what we look like to the world. Amen. I I, I, I really believe that we should look uh, the world should look at us and see the same thing that God looks at us through Christ. Amen. Amen. I mean, really, it, that's what we're called to do. Uh, and, and I think He's really preparing because this Christian walk we know is not easy. I mean, I, I would live an easier life, and I would fit in with more people, be like my more people, oh, have more followers on Facebook and Instagram if I follow the world than if I follow that's Christ. Right. That's right. I mean, it, this is, he, he's preparing this church at, for possibly walking through what he may walk through. And even our lives, we have to look at uh, this Christian walk. This is not an easy walk. No, we're not called to be popular. Amen. We're called to be faithful. Amen. Right? Faithful obedience. followers of Jesus Christ. Be obedient to him. We, that doesn't necessarily make you popular with people. I mean, that, that's not necessarily a popularity statement. When you start telling people the truth, the truth tends to cut. Right? It tends to divide us. I mean, at times, why people don't like to hear the truth. They, they know what the truth is. The truth convicts. The Amen. truth uh, pricks at our conscience. And, 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 and folks don't like that when, they're, when it's pointed out to them, although we need to walk in truth. Amen. We need to speak truth. And, and so we need to make sure we do that. Um, so as we look at this, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. I, I like that. I like to pull out phrases. Y'all pull out phrases from the scripture. I pull phrases like I don't just pull like one word. I pull like a phrase or something that jumped. The, the thing that jumped out in that first verse to me was walk worthy of the calling. Amen. Okay. Walk worthy of the calling. Worthy of the calling. So so there's there's something, you know, that, that we need to live up to. 
Amen. I mean, there, there's there's an expectation. There, there's something there. And and we could just go into the, uh, the, the moralistic side of it to where do this and don't do this. But I think that it's even deeper than, than that. I mean, I think that's part of it, right? Yes. Because as Christians, we need to exemplify Christ. We need to live a, a godly life. We need to live a life that, that's pleasing to the Lord. But there's even more to that. When he talks about walk worthy of the calling, well, what were they called to be? What were the, who were they called to be? And see, as we look at these first three chapters in Ephesians, we're talking about the birth of this thing called the church. Where Gentile and Jew are brought together, where the dividing wall has been broken down, the separation between Jew and Gentile has been broken down, and they've been brought together in unity in Christ. Amen. Okay, so he says, you need to walk worthy of the calling. What's the calling? You've been called to be in Christ. That, that's, you've got to be worthy of, you've got to walk worthy of the call. The calling is powerful. The calling Amen. is, and not only is it powerful, but it, but it, but it enables, it's enabling. It's an enabling call. It's a, it's a call that, 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 that helps us live it. It's not just words, y'all. I mean, a lot of times we think about, oh, it's just words. No, it's not words. They're powerful words. The calling of Christ is powerful. And we're called to walk worthy of the calling. Called to be one in Christ, united Amen. in him. The world needs this. The world needs the book of Ephesians right now. The world needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's so dis much disunity. There's so much, uh, you know, dis dissension, division on, in all fronts, in all, everywhere you look. Nobody agrees on anything. No, sir. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's just. We're really divided. Fractured. It really is. Uh, and, and one of the things that I know Pastor Rick said, he, I, I like the word beseech or mind beseech, you, yes. used urge yes. or Plead. Yeah, plead. Uh, under, yeah. Understand, Paul had the authority through Christ to command. Yes. But he did not, he did command. not command. He pled with he them. He pled with them. Yes. And, and you have to understand Paul's heart. And it reflects on us too, our yes. heart when we when we work with each other. Because this is all unity, okay? This is all yes, it's that all Paul is working on unity together. in the Christ. And, 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 and it, guys, it, we get more results out of honey than we do uh, anything else. Right. Be, uh, showing love and grace. Because I can command someone to do it. At my job where I work, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a charge nurse, and I, I can command and tell you, you need to do that. And they, they can resent me. They can hold grudges against me because he shouldn't have talked to me that way. Right. Who am I? Who, you know, and, 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 and what Paul is dealing with is a, a really immature, because a lot of that's kind of a negative connotation, but it's not immature Christians. Yes. And, and, and he knows that rather than beating them across the head and drag them to church, he's going to say, I, I need you. I'm, I Please, you see the importance of doing this, right. acting this way. I'm pleading with you. I want to show grace to you. Yes. And that's our way. Our heart should be with dealing with all brothers and sisters in Christ. Is it easy to do that? <laughs> no. I'll be the first one to tell you a big N-O. And I think because it's we go, hard. If we go to the Gospel of John, Joey, I mean, and we look at um, John 13... Uh, 34 and 35. What th this is this is what 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 Paul or what Jesus is telling the disciples. He he tells them this. He says, um, let me make sure I got the right right verses. Um, in in verse 34 of chapter 13 of John, he says, "A new commandment I give to you." Okay, see, and Paul Paul is lining up everything that Amen. Paul says and Jesus says. It all lines up. There's no there's no disunity in the Word of God because. The Holy Spirit of God inspired all of this. I mean, Amen. this is yes, all, sir. it's all there. So he says, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. All right, now that, see, that's a powerful thing. That we're, we're commanded, y'all, to love one another. Whether we like it or not, we're, caught, we're commanded by God to love one another. Well, do we agree with each other on everything all the time? No, but we're commanded to love one another. He Amen. says, so, so a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Verse 35, and notice this, by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Amen. See, I believe that ties in with walking worthy of the calling of Jesus Christ. That, that as we walk worthy of the calling, we're called to be united together, we're called to be together in Christ, that we're, we're to be known by the way that we love one another. That, that's, and, and see, that's the most difficult thing in the world. I mean, you tell me how difficult it is in the church. How many churches are on this road alone? And how many of these churches on this road are actually, have broken off from each other? Amen. To where they've been splintered off. 
from this one or that one or whatever. You got you got all the little PFWB churches Amen. all down the road. I promise you that there probably weren't all of them. They all probably didn't start because someone started something there. A lot of them started because somebody was mad at another one. And they couldn't get along. So they said, well, we'll just take our toys and go have our own church. Amen. And you see that all through the, the uh, body of Christ. You see denomination like that. You see, you see all kinds of things where there's division. It ought not be like that. We ought to be able to all come together as believers in Christ Amen. and be able to worship with one another. Now, I know that there are some people that are more Pentecostal than others. Some, some are more, you know, more Calvinistic. Some are more this. Some are more that. But there's got to be a way somewhere in there where we can walk worthy of the calling of Jesus Christ. Amen. So where we can walk together and see, and that's important to me, that we be united in Him. If we can't be united in Him, then we're not doing it right. Amen. And we're supposed to be known by the way we love one another. Not by the way we disagree with one another. Not by the way we hate on one another. Not by the way we do that. But Amen. by the way we love one another. And I think that that's a, it's a hard thing. And Paul was dealing with that even back then. They were having problems with unity in the church. The book of Corinthians. If you read oh, Corinthians, man, yes. there's so much division there. There's so much fussing. There's so much fighting. There's so much sin. There's so much all kinds of stuff that goes on in there. And you just see it all through it. And yet all the whole time, Paul calls them saints. He calls them brothers and sisters in Amen. Christ. He tells them he loves them. He tells them all this stuff. And they're a mess. But we have to learn how to get along. Amen. Now this is what Paul's, this is what Paul's trying to do. He's trying to bring them together. Unify the church. And, and, and we try sometimes, and I know I've probably been at fault of this, to, to more split. Well, you, generally and, we do. And, 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 I, and I, that's something I've, re, work, I, you know, I've worked and I've repented on. And the more I've learned, the closer I walk with Christ, the more I see, listen, if we can get the, the, the which some of the truths we're about to go over in a yes, little bit. Absolutely. If we, if we can Kingdom say, we, issues. Yeah, if we can, we agree on this, then everything else is secondary. I, 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 can, I can walk and I can worship beside someone who may worship different than me. I, I, you know, and I, I, think, I, don't, I don't think God is going to, God sits up from in heaven and he says, you know what, <laughs> just because you raise your hands, you're not going to come in. You know what I mean? I, 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 I just don't see that in his word. I don't see that in scripture. Uh, this is something we, we need to look past because it's the flesh dividing us. And yes, God it is, is trying it to is. And we're in Christ. Us. If we're in Christ, if you're in the body, you're in the body. Amen. There's not more than one body. There's one body. Amen. And we'll get to that. Amen. But there's more than one. So let's go ahead and get to verse 2. We, we'll go ahead and get in here a little bit. So verse 1, I'll, and I'll read it just to keep the context. It says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. I, I mean, I, I want you to think about that for a second because what Joey brought up earlier, he said that he be beseech, I beseech you. Amen. Okay, I'm begging you, I'm pleading you to, to walk worthy of the calling. And then he goes on even further and says, I'm coming to you, not telling you, hey, this is what you got to do, but I'm coming with lowliness. Amen. Right? With gentleness, with long suffering, and bearing with one another in love. So all those things we've got to do. I mean, lowliness, you're talking about humility. Amen. Hubris, yes, you know, being being not having humility is a dangerous thing. Hubris is, I mean, pride cometh before um, you know, a fall, right? Um, yes, a haughty sir. look and, and and pride and all those things before destruction and a fall and all I mean, you know, that that's what gets you in trouble. Paul says, look, you need to be, you need to be humble. Amen. No, you need to be humble, but he says you need to come with gentleness or meekness. We need to have a meek spirit. You've got to be able. And see, and that's the thing about it. I, I think we miss that in church sometimes. Where there's so many times we want to be right. Amen. We don't want to necessarily be united. We want to be right. And I think there's, there's, you know, there's varying degrees of right. Some of this stuff, why uh, we believe a certain way, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm absolutely 100% correct in yes, some sir. of my doctrine because I have to, you know, some of it I'm not sure. We, we think that's what's going to happen. Amen. But we're not sure. And so we have to be careful that we don't exclude our brothers and sisters in Christ over some things that are not kingdom issues. I mean, are the, yes, we sir. are in Christ. We, we need to be led by Christ. We need to be led by the Spirit. We need to understand that there's only one way to the Father, and that's through the Son. And we need to understand these things. But, but there's some things that are kind of areas that, that are not necessarily um, just set in stone, where, where we might have a little bit of latitude. Amen. 
to where, where something can go, you know, one way or the other. I, I, I think when I talk, you talk about Paul and in Rome at that time when they had meat in the markets. Well, most of the meat in the market was, was sacrificed to some idol, to some foreign god, whatever it might be. And so they would buy that meat. And Paul said, well, look, you know, if you don't know where the meat came from, eat the meat. But if somebody told you, hey, that meat was sacrificed to an idol, then don't eat the meat. Amen. But you got to, you know, you've got to, got to have that latitude to move in there to be able to fellowship and, and, and have your being one with another. And, and we need to understand that, that people are at different levels of spirituality, Amen. different levels of Christianity. You know, when I, I used to get mad when people would call me a babe in Christ when I first got saved. I said, oh, I know the Lord. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm good. But, you know, as I look and, and years and years down the road now, I realized that I was a babe. Yes, sir. I realized that my understanding was not what it is now. I realized that I have, I have, I have changed along the way. I, I've become more Christ-like. I've become more in touch with the Spirit of God. I've, I've, I understand the Scripture better. I understand how to walk with the Lord better. And that takes time. That, that's does. something that you have to, you have to get. So Paul's telling them that they need, they need humility, they need meekness, and they need to be long-suffering, um, patient with one another. I mean, that, that, that's hard. Patience. Amen. Isn't that what I tell you? Don't pray for patience. Anybody ever hear that? Y'all ever hear that? Don't pray for patience. Everybody says, don't, don't pray for patience. God will, God will make you patient, right? <laughs> yeah. Don't pray for patience. But he's saying here that we need to be patient. We need to be slow um, in, in avenging wrongs with one yes. another, right? And see, that's what gets us in trouble, I think, sometimes, is that if we could just hold our tongue long enough to let things kind of, you don't have to just have a split reaction. Come on. You know, sometimes we, we think we've got to react right then. I've got to say something right then. Wisdom says. Amen. Slow to speak. Slow, slow to, to speak, anger. right? Slow to anger. And, and Paul's telling us, look, you guys, you, you, need to, you need to work with one another. You need to be, you're, you're called with all lowliness, with gentleness, with long suffering. And you need to bear with one another in love. I mean, now, once again, now, now, now that's, that's that whole love thing. Again, remember, John says, you'll be known by the way you love one another. You know, yeah. or, or in the book of John, um, Jesus said it, but it was in the book of John, that you'll be known by the way you love one another. And, and Paul is telling them, walk worthy of the calling. You've been called to be one in Christ, united in him. Now we're told that, that we, need to be, we need to be humble with one another. We need to be meek and, and gentle and, and patient with one another and, and, and bear with one another, holding one another up in love. Amen. I mean, and that's part of it. Loving each other is holding one another up. And I mean, I think that that's, that's you know, something that we, we, if we use the same standard that we expect people to use with us, Amen. that we would, we would use on others the same standard, things would be different. Probably. It'd be a whole lot different, right? We, we always think we need to be, we should be treated better than everybody else. Uh, that's something we all think struggle with it's to varying flesh. degrees. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I had a bad day. Uh, th everything's not working. And people need to treat me right. You know what I mean? Uh, it, 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 even when it comes to, to our sins, we're the same with our sins. <laughs> well, it's okay. I do this, but well, let's look at Rhonda over here. That's you know. Yeah. You know, absolutely. You see what she wore to church? Is that top low enough? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, you say I, we're we're so we're so easy to talk about others and not lift each other up. I mean, it, we we really uh, we, we really struggle with that in the Christian church, I, I, and and that's why these virtues are important because sin still thrives in the church in the body because we're in this flesh. It's still here. That's why he's telling us to have these virtues. Yes. These are what we need to learn to deal with, to help and bear with each other and live with each other, help to unify us. And this is why he's, he's pointing these things out here. I mean, to hold each other. When's the last time that you spoke of somebody good enough to somebody else from church? Amen. Or when's the last time you spoke good of your church to somebody Amen. who doesn't go to your church? I mean, a lot of times people don't do that. Uh, we want to we want to we want to point point out the bad things. Well, I don't like what Joey's doing here. I, 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 Joey shouldn't have made this decision. Uh, I mean, when's the last time you supported God, who God placed above you at your church? Come on, we're, we're supposed to hold each other up. How often do you pray for Pastor Rick as he shepherds the church? 
These are things that God has called us to do. And, and guys, it, 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 it not, not just us, but how, when is the last time you prayed for your Sunday school teacher? Yes. When's absolutely. the last time you prayed for your brother or sister in Christ that sits right next to you when you saw them last Sunday? That all they were doing was crying their eyes out at church, and you didn't go lay a hand on. And all you could be thinking is about, man, what do they do? I wonder what they did. And you should have been praying for them. We're supposed to edify each other. Right, We're supposed to look patient. Yeah. We're supposed to be humble and thinking, man, God, let, my, let me cry out for what this person's crying out for too. Let me pray for them, Lord God. Because that's what our Savior in heaven does. Yes, he intercedes for us. He all cries time. out for each that's and every right. one of us. Right. So this is something that we're supposed to imitate God. Right. If we emulate Christ. Amen. And we intercede for one another. You know somebody that's struggling with something. You know they struggle with something. Then you pray for them. I mean, these, pray for them. I this mean, fruit pray, right pray here. that they, they overcome. Because, see, here's the thing. If this was automatic, if it was automatic, why is Paul telling you walk worthy of the calling? I, 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 if, if it was automatic, he wouldn't tell you walk worthy of the calling. He'd say, well, you all, you all got it. You, you got it. So you I got mean, zapped. You're good. You won't have to worry. But he says you got to walk worthy of the calling. I mean, that there's something there. The, the church, see, and that's what I hate when people beat the church. The church is the most awesome organization that God ever brought into existence. Amen. It is the body of Christ. Lord, help us. It's Amen. a place where we're supposed to be able to live together. This should be heaven on earth. I mean, and everybody's, oh, no, I can't be. This should be a, a, an outcropping of heaven. This should be a place where people come. This should be the closest you can get to heaven is when you're in the church. Amen. When you're seeing, we pray, you know, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. Amen. Right? We pray that. But, th but this, the church should be a place where God's will Amen. is being done on earth Come on. as it is in heaven. I mean, that's, that's what we're called to do that. And, and Paul knew that, man. Paul, you, you, man, God just did a work in him. I mean, he revealed things to Paul that just, I mean, it's amazing. I'm, I'm so thankful for the word of God that, that we have what God revealed to Paul. Amen. And this, these are the things that God gives you. Okay, it's not something you have to go look for. It, this is something that we will hit on maintaining. God starts it in you. He gives you a little bit That's through right. His Holy Spirit, and He tells you to grow it. Right. How do you grow it? Stir we should be. Gift, right? should, amen. Gift, right? You need to be in God's Word, studying. And there's nothing that should hold us back from opening up His Word, reading it, learning to walk closer to God, and growing these things so we can bear with each other in love. Yes, because it's a job. Walk worthy of the call. Amen. You've been called to walk in unity together. You've been called to walk in Christ. Walk worthy of that. So as we go go a little further here, it, it once again, it, in uh, verse 3, you've got another one of those words, kind of like beseech. Amen. Okay? It says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Endeavoring. That's another one of those great words, endeavoring. Amen. That's that's I'm um, hastening to exert oneself. Um, that's not wasting any. Don't waste any time, man. You need to hasten. You need to exert yourself. You need to endeavor. You need to. Don't pass, don't no, waste another minute. Don't waste this another minute. This is what minute. Paul's saying. Stop. Right? Get off your get off the get out of your bed. Get off your couch. Turn Netflix off. Netflix and chill, and start reading God's right. word. Don't. Waste I mean, this is what another, he's telling. Don't another waste minute. another minute. Then I mean. It, 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 I, I'm sorry, Pastor. No, it, go ahead. In go mine, ahead. it says make every effort. Right. Are you making every effort to see God's Holy Spirit grow in you and you start producing this Amen. fruit to love your brothers and sisters in Christ? Yes. And see, and, and, and see once again, it's a, it's a word where, where he tells us, walk worthy of the calling. Amen. Then he tells us, I beseech you, right? Beseech you to walk worthy of the calling. And then he says, look, I need you to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That it's not going to be easy to have unity. Amen. It's not even in the spirit. It's not going to be easy because people are going to be be drawn off by stuff and and people's pride and and feelings and all this stuff's going to get in the way and and every once in a while the devil's going to throw a monkey wrench in Amen. the midst of it and all this is going to happen. He says, "I need you to exert yourself and don't wait around. Don't waste any time. Exert yourself now. Keep the unity and the bond of peace. We got to make every effort in the church." Every effort. We don't make enough effort to maintain that bond of peace, to maintain that unity. Amen. And the only way that that can happen is through the Holy Spirit of God being in us and working through us. But we've got to fill ourselves with godly things and fill ourselves with the Word of God and pray and seek God and, and seek one another and be in Amen. fellowship with one another and learn how to love one another. Whew. Amen. I mean, and, and love, love is not automatic. 
Because God commands us, He commands us to love one another. Now I want you to think about that for a second. Amen. He commands us, love one another. And love not, one another. And not just the infatuation of something. No, this is love, a love one that's another. More. I mean, and it's something you got to work. You got to endeavor. You got to, you got, I beseech you. you Love's know, a choice. Yes. It really is. Yes. And so we've got to understand how to do that. And, and, and you got to work it out. It's not going to come without an effort. It's not going to come without a fight. Amen. But you're going to have to fight. I mean, it, a lot of this stuff, people think it comes automatic. It's not automatic. The Spirit's there. But we've got to decide, am I going to feed the flesh? Come on. Or am I going to feed the Spirit? If I'm going to walk in the Spirit, I won't please the flesh. But if, I, but if I'm walking in the flesh, I'm not going to please the Spirit. Amen. So I have to decide, which, which one am I going to, you know, how, how am I going to come out on this thing? And I, I think that's important that we understand that, that there, there is a way. We can keep unity. We can keep the bond of peace. But we've got to make every effort. Amen. Yes, sir. Every effort made. I mean, Paul talked about it in Romans 8. And he said, those that live according to the flesh... Uh, they, they, they feed on things of the flesh. Those that live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. You've got to make a decision in your life. Uh, it's the same thing when it comes to loving Christ. You know, God comes out and searches, and He gets us. I, I, I'm in agreement with that. But we have to make decisions for, her, for Him right. to, we have to, to stay with Him. Okay, right. that's, that's what I feel like Scripture shows me. Right. And this it's, is something that it, we have to accept too. Is Am I going to grow myself in Christ? Amen. A, a, am I going to am I gonna look past when somebody makes a, a snide remark to me and say, God, just give me strength? Or am I going to rip, rip my flesh to go back? Am I going to, you know, if someone makes a decision at church that I don't agree with and it's whoever they placed in charge, God, let me go and work for you and work at church like I'm working for you. Amen. I, I mean, this is something... We, I, I battle with. This is something I, at times I've said things I shouldn't have said. And I've done things I shouldn't have done. I look back at those and I say, God, please forgive me. Let me repent, Lord. Let yes. me turn from that. That's and right. Lord God, and just work for you. Wherever it happens, whatever people say, whatever people act towards me, Lord God, I'm doing this for you. I'm in Christ. Amen. And Christ takes Amen. that hit. He takes that hit for me. He, he absorbs that. Yes. And, and he says, you know what? Don't worry. Keep on going. I'll give you the strength. I'll give you That's what right. you need. He orders our steps. Amen. I mean, he orders. And matter of fact, he'll, 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 he'll pick up a, a righteous man seven times, man. You Amen. fall. He Amen. keeps picking you up, Hallelujah. man. I mean, you keep that picking love. you up. And, and I, I look back, you know, in chapter 3, he talks about being rooted and grounded in love. Once again, see, now, now you're back into that whole, that whole ground of, of love, loving one another, you know, loving and, and being in the body of Christ. And, and you know. It's so important that we, we understand that, that that's where, that's where it's at. Yes, and sir. so we, we need to go there. So let's go ahead and, and go to um, verse 4. It says, there's one body and one spirit, just as you were called, and one hope of your calling. Amen. So we, we think about this. So you've got one body, one spirit, one hope, right? Yes, sir. What's the body? We know what the body is. This is what, this is what Christ gave his life for. Amen. This is Amen. what was started on the day of Pentecost. The body of Christ. Right? Amen. To be in Christ. That's the body that he's talking about, right? That's the yes, body. Sir. That there's one body. There's only one body, y'all. That's it. We're in it. And that's it. I mean, this is it. This is the body. This is where we should have our being. This is where, where we need to we need Amen. to be in Christ. We need to be struggling together, working together, building one another up, bringing everybody along. I mean, we've got to figure out ways to where we just don't leave people on the, on the roadside dead. Amen. Where we, we bring them with us somehow. There's people that are struggling. There's people that are battling. There's people that, that need Christ. And, and we've got to try to bring them into the body. You know, and get them there because there is only one body. Amen. I mean, it's his. And I, I remember Pastor Rick gave me this before a long time ago. He said, "Be a be a, a answer to a prayer." Yes. And th and this is what the body is: a, the body of, of Christ, the body of the church, is an answer to Jesus's prayer in yes. John seventeen. Yes. Um, this is what he prayed for, and, and that night before he died, I, I want to read in verse twenty one. It says, "Is I pray that they will all be one, just like just as you and I are one." As you and I are in me, Father, I am in you. And they may be in us so that the world will believe you have sent me. That's right. This is an answered prayer. When, you, when we're baptized in 1 Corinthians 12, he said, yes. we're baptized into one body. We're, this is God answering the Son's prayer. And how yes. amazing you're a part of what Jesus prayed for. Amen. He prayed for this. And you know what? We're coming in and we're seeing it lived out. And this is our Savior. This is the one that spoke creation with just bare words, planets were formed. Life entered a body. 
Amen. And this is so amazing to be a part of that. Amen. One body. One body. Yes, One body. Sir. Important to be in the body. You know, I mean, I, I, I can't stress it enough that the power of, of the body of Christ, of the church. Um, we talk about one spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. Um, John 14. I, I like it. John, the book of John is really Amen. awesome. You know, John 14, um, 16 through 18. Well, I, I think that we need, we don't want to forget what, what Jesus, um, what, what was sent to us at Pentecost. I mean, what, what God gave us. He gave Amen. us something, you know. I mean, it wasn't, he says, and I will pray the Father, and he'll give you another helper. Amen. I, I don't know about y'all, but I need a helper. <laughs> I need it. Y'all need it. Anybody need a helper? Amen. Come I on. need a helper every day, every second near about. I need a helper. I, I need a helper. He says, I will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Amen. For how long? Forever. forever. He's going to abide with us. So he's going to be in us and, and with us. The spirit of truth. Man, we need truth for sure. Amen. It says this, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. I mean, and see, that's the problem. When you look at the world out there and you wonder, how can the world be like it is? Because it cannot receive the spirit of truth, okay? They don't know him. They can't see him. They Come can't on. hear him until you get in the body and you get in Christ. And you make that leap of faith and you decide, you know what? I'm going to pray and ask God to save my soul, right? I'm going to give myself to him. I'm going to ask him to, to forgive my sins, to cleanse me, to wash me. I'm going to repent. I'm going to turn away from my sinful ways. I'm going to turn away from the flesh. I'm going to turn away from the world. And I'm going to turn toward Christ. And when that happens, then all of a sudden the scales. See, and that's what's amazing about the book of Acts. Paul's walk, you know, on the Amen. road to Damascus, he was blinded. Amen. And, I, and it's almost like it was like God telling us that Paul is as religious as he was, as the, as the Hebrew of the Hebrews, the Pharisee of the Pharisee, whatever he was, that he, by the law, faultless, you know, blameless, that he was so awesome. Yet he had scales, that he was blind. He Amen. did not know the way, right? And he has to get to Ananias. And when Ananias prays for him, they say that something like scales fell off his eyes, and he could see. Right. And see, I feel like that that's like the Holy Spirit of God coming up. When, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, the scales come off the eyes. Amen. And all of a sudden, you start seeing things as they really are. Not as the world tells you they are, but as they really are in the Spirit of, of God. And so, so the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Amen. He'll be in you, in Christ, in you, right? He's in you, amen? I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Man, I'm going to tell you, see, God fulfills his promises. Amen. He, he's, gonna, he's not going to leave us without the comforter. He's not going to leave us without the helper. He's not going to leave us without the spirit of truth. He's not going to leave. I like the Greek word, paraclete, one that comes alongside us, you amen. know, that, I mean, that like hooks right onto us. I mean, I, that's awesome. Some of these Greek words are so cool because that's such an awesome word. Yes, I mean, it, it just sounds cool, paraclete. I just like that. I mean, but, but the Holy Spirit comes alongside us and, and helps us with all these things. And, and that's this Holy Spirit of God. That's what we're talking about. One body, the body of Christ. We're in Christ. One spirit, the Holy Spirit of God that comes alongside us now as a helper. That we're Amen. not by ourselves anymore. That he is, he is in us and with us and leading us and guiding us and directing us in all things. I, just, I, I love it. You got to remember what the Holy Spirit does in your life. The Holy Spirit is there to reveal God to you. Yes. He, he's there to inspire you with the love of God. He, he's there to confirm God's plan and God's calling on your life. And he's there to sanctify you. Yes. This is his job working within yes. you. Uh, when we read God's word and, and when we work, this is, this is what feeds the Holy Spirit in us. That pushes more of us out and, more of, and brings more of God in. This is what he's working towards. This is, this is something that, that God gave us. And, and, and be wary of, of spirits, too. I mean, First John, he tells us uh, to, to test every spirit. That's right. To make sure it's of God. That's right. Because there's a lot of false things out yes. in this world today. Yes. And, and, and a lot that run rampant in, in places that we call church. And we have to be able to know God's word and test what we hear to see if it's true. That's because right. Whatever is said from the pulpit, if it, if it doesn't align with God's word, That's right. if, if it goes against, this is, is something you need to leave and walk out of. This is something you're going to be led down the wrong path. And this is it, it's good. And, and I, the Holy Spirit works in it. He'll, he'll let you know That's as well. Right. That's right. You will. I mean, this is, this is that one spirit that dwells in all believers yes. that connects yes. us all together. Yes. It's fabulous. Amen. I mean, God didn't leave us 
I mean, he gives us discernment through the Spirit. I mean, you know, conviction comes through the Spirit. Amen. You know, everything. I mean, the power of preaching, it's because the Holy Spirit is, is moving. It's not, it's not because of the preacher. The preacher doesn't have any power. Amen. The Holy Spirit of God has the power. He's the one he that's, that's, that's touching hearts and lives. I mean, that's where the power comes from. It doesn't come from us. We, we do the best we can, but through the preaching, the Spirit is able to move in the, in the house. I mean, you know, so it's, it's a powerful thing. So we have one body, one spirit, and one hope. And I think about the hope. And I don't know about you, Joey, but I went, I went all the way back to Isaiah 55 when I started talking about hope. Did you go there? I, 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 did, read go? It, I did read it part of it, yes, Where did you go? Yeah, see, you went back there too. <laughs> but, I, but I went back to Isaiah 55 because I feel like that, that we need to understand that we have been given an invitation to abundant life. Amen. God has given us an invitation. He's given us an invitation into something bigger and greater and more awesome than anything that we could ever imagine here. Um, and, and that's what, what God wants to do with us. So we got one body, one spirit, one hope. Amen. Isaiah 55, starting in verse 1, says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. If you're thirsty today, come to the waters. Amen. Amen. And then he says, he says, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money, without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Verse 3, incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your sh soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. I mean, and, and that's what I, I mean. We need to incline our ear to God. We need to start listening to God. We need to start listening to the Holy Spirit. We got, we've got to start, we got to start pushing the noise down in the world. I mean, what, what gets your attention? What keeps your attention? What, what's coming in your, remember, garbage in, garbage out. Amen. So whatever you're putting in through these ear holes in your head, whatever you're putting in all the time, if you're putting garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. You've got, you got to be careful what you let in. What you let in through your eyes, what you let in through your ears, what you let in through your heart. You get, you, we've got to be careful with that. That one hope, God gives us that hope. And, and he tells us that everyone who thirsts, just come to the waters. Incline your ear to me. I mean, just, just come to me. God has, that's where the hope is. I mean, I mean. There, there's, the world can be so hopeless. I mean, you look out there today, it's pretty hopeless at times. But yeah, in, Christ, in Christ, in Christ. We have one body, one spirit, and one hope. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, we have hope that we, we can be set free. Amen. And I, I think it helps perse us persevere through the tough times. Yes. Knowing that there's hope. We get a glimpse here now, but it's, it's going to be fully glorified on that day when we re we're reconciled right. with our head. That's right. With, with our Father in heaven. This is something to look for. I, I, it's, it's a living hope, First yes. Peter says. Yes. Uh, it's a living hope, the hope of glory of an inheritance reserved in heaven for us. You yes. have something waiting for you. This is that one hope that binds us all together, that we all look forward to, or I pray that you do. These are, this, is, this, these, this is the base of our unity that Paul is laying out here, this one body, one spirit, one hope. And we're about to go next to that yes, one Lord. Absolutely. Right, uh, which f verse 5 tells us... Um, let me, let me get my, my glasses on here. Verse 5 tells us, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Amen. I mean, you, it's kind of Trinitarian also, you know, three. I mean, Amen. It, once again, but one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I mean, and we, 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 you know, need to understand that, you know, that's, that's where our hope lies. Yes, sir. Amen. Knowing our Savior, does he, does he have lordship over your life? I mean, a lot of times we like to think of Jesus Sorry, Jesus as our Savior. I apologize. Amen. The country coming out. There apologize. You go. That's country Jesus. Um, we, we know Jesus as our Savior, but do, is he Lord over your life? It, it, I really, because a lot of times, a, a lot of people are lost. They know of a good Jesus. They know this heaven that the, these Christians talk about, that we come and sit in a church every Sunday. But, but is he really Lord over your life? Does he govern what you do? Do you think about him and what he wants for your life Amen. when you make a decision what even when it comes to small things watching what you watch on tv how you lead your your house at home how do you how you raise your and rear your children these are things that that when lord and he's the lord of your life that's right you consider and you you put up front first amen amen 
He's, he's, the, he's all in all. I mean, as he, we have our being in him. When we, when we talk about um, one faith, I, I wanted to just share from Romans because I, I feel like it, you know, that's the basis for, for our faith. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. All right, see, we are in Christ. We're not ashamed of the gospel. And he says, For it's the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Amen. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. See, once again, breaking down that dividing wall, the Jews Amen. and the Greeks. You know, the Jews and the Gentiles, the whole world, it, it's there. For everyone who believes, the Jew first, also the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And see, that that's that one faith, you know, that the just Amen. shall live by faith, that we, we trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know that that's where our strength is, that's where our power is, that's where our hope is, that's where eternal life is, that's where forgiveness is. I mean, it's all there in that Amen. faith that we have. Yes, sir. It's just, it's beautiful. And, it, and this is what Jude talks about in Jude 3, is, is the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And this is what the faith that was given to us. Yes. I mean, this is something that we possess. we got to have the right attitude, okay? And Jude I, said I, we had to contend for that. Faith, amen. Right? Yes, he sir. He said we need to contend for that common. I mean, we need to fight for that. We this need is to, something we need to make sure. Every day. You know, yes. you got to you got to go and, and, and go after that faith in your life. Yes. Because I mean, a lot of times we have the right attitude, but we have the wrong object of faith. Yes. We, we, we put the wrong thing that we're focusing on and, and not Jesus, the head. That's right. That's and, right. and this is something you need to get straight in your life. This faith that... Who does it come from? Who give it? To, who gives it to us? I, and that's something to remember, I, I, as always. <clears throat> Amen. So you got one Lord, one faith, and one baptism Amen. here. A baptism being, and, and and what he's talking about here, um, he's talking about being identified with Christ. I mean, you know that in in uh, Romans chapter six, in uh, let me see, it says uh, verse three. It says, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. I mean, I, I just I, I think about that, you know, that when we baptize folks, that's why baptismal services are so awesome. Amen. Because we're standing there and we're making a, a public profession that we are, we are in the body. Amen. We are in Christ. That I am in Christ and I'm going to stand before everyone. And when I go under that water and I come back up, the old man is dead. The new man has risen. I'm no longer what I was before. That I'm now a new creation in Christ. I mean, that, that's, that's something, Amen. you know, that we, we need to celebrate that. I, and and, and I, I think we have to understand the time that they were in. This was not something they welcomed in, 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 in the Roman occupied. The Christians were not liked. So when they saw you baptizing people, it's kind of like now. I don't know if you saw that trending videos around that these people are trying to baptize somebody. I cannot know the location, but it's a Christian baptism. And people are, are, are boycotting, shooting uh, the silly string at them, yelling, cussing at them. And the police are holding these people back while, while these Christians try to baptize these couple people. I mean, this is, we're almost at the time again where, where once we're going to be boycotted. This is something that, this is, this is something that, this is why it's so important that, that he points out one baptism. This is something when you proclaim Christ back then, they wanted to kill you. They hated you. They ostracized Christians back there. No, don't leave me like that. I'm trying to get it out. Um, and, and this is something that we, we, we take granted fun. in this day and age. That's right. We kind of, you know, we're, it's not like it was back then. It's getting close to it in certain areas. Uh, um, and it, even in, in our foreign countries, third world countries, where, where Christians are killed, where, you know, they, they, don't, they don't openly serve Christ in China. No, because they can get, uh, they get arrested and put in jail for yeah. several years. I, it, we have to understand the, the importance of baptism Absolutely. and our proclamation professing yes. who Jesus Christ is in our lives. This is it's a heart thing, once again. Are you strong enough to proclaim Jesus Christ everywhere you go? Amen. And this is something that he, he wants us to understand, that one baptism that connects yes, us all. Yes, absolutely. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, that we are together. See, unified. And see, he's making it, you know, Paul's making the case for the unity in the body. Look, Amen. we are all under the same Lord. Amen. We're all, we all have the same faith. In Jesus Christ, we've all been baptized. We've all been identified with Christ. We've made a public profession of our faith. We've 
We've stood before people and said, whatever may come, I'm going to stand with Christ. I mean, we, we, you know, that's, that, that's a powerful thing. And, and so I think that we need, to, we need to understand that. It needs to be something that's important in our lives, who we're identified as. I mean, what's your identity? Amen. Right? Didn't you preach a thing? You did a series on your identity, right? Yes, sir. And I mean, you know, what's your identity in this world? If someone looked at you and, and, they asked, and you asked them, well, well, what would you identify me with? I mean, what, you know, what, what would Amen. my identi identity be? You know, what, what, what am I wrapped up in? What, what do you think? When you see me, what do you think of? You know, I mean, and that's scary sometimes, it right? Is. I mean, it, it, it's, I, I was reading something how to find out your fruits, right? Yeah, or, or your gifts. Let me say your spiritual gifts. Uh, and, and one of the articles I was reading, they were talking about, they said, ask one of your Christian friends. <laughs> yeah, ask how them what your how gift scary is. is that? You know, ask somebody or ask somebody. Um, you know, even if you ask a Christian friend, how, what do you see in me? When you look at me, when Amen. you hear me talk, when you see what, uh, the way I walk, not for say the, the, my posture or anything like that, but the way I, I live out my life, do you see Christ? Amen. I mean, because you should. And God, I repent, Lord God, all the times that I've or, or made jokes or, or acting silly for doing, doing stuff I shouldn't have done. Uh, uh, God, I should have been, been a living example of you. And can you look at your life or have people around you? Are you brave enough to ask somebody who will tell you the truth and, and, and ask you, how, how do you really see me? Amen. And sometimes it's best to come not from a Christian. What, what do you look at me? When you look at me, uh, you ask somebody you work, you work with. When you, if, you know, don't go to church. Because if you work at a job, there's people there that don't go to church. <laughs> it's everywhere. Just ask them, what do you see when you look at me? When you hear, when you hear me talk, am I uplifting? Do, do, do I show grace to people? A am, right. I, am I kind? Am I loving? Because that's what, that's what God calls us to be. And, and, that, and that can be very hard. If you're not, well, then you might need to check up. And, that's and, yeah, that's and, something you need to get on your knees. I Either mean, you can do it there or when you get home, I don't care. But I would do it as soon as I could and ask God, please forgive me. Let me repent of the way I've acted, Lord God. And not being a living example that you that you called me to do. I mean, because like you said, garbage in, garbage out. I mean, really, sooner or later, we'll, our actions will reflect the, the, our heart. Yes, absolutely. It yeah, won't man. lie. I mean, what no. comes out of a man? Amen. I mean, right? He didn't said what goes in a man doesn't make him unclean. It's what comes out of a man. Amen. What comes out of your heart? I mean, you know, and what's really in there will come out. I mean, it will. It will eventually. You know, it'll 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 get out. Amen. And we we have to be careful with that. And and I, I think that it's important as Christians that we understand that we represent Jesus Christ. Remember, walk worthy of the calling. I mean, you know, if you if you don't get anything out of tonight whatsoever, take that home with you. Walk worthy of the calling. You've been called by Jesus Christ to be something more, to be something that greater than anything in this world, to be in the body of Christ. I mean, and we, we need to make sure that we walk worthy of that calling. So we, we, we'll go ahead and, and finish up here. And I'm going to read the last part all together again, starting with verse 4, because I, I, I want to just go ahead and, and put it back together. It says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. Wow. Wow. I was reading something called those last things, the seven ones. The seven ones? The seven ones. Uh, it, uh, the completion of a Christian. I, I, I really believe that if you hold these as, as your basis, as, as the, some call the seven truths, that, 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 that def, you, you're, you're, you follow God. This is what, this is what it, it should be the base of every Christian walk. Amen. A, 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 do, I, do I celebrate? Am I in that one body? Do I celebrate and have that one spirit in me? Am I, do I have that one hope? Is he Lord, my one Lord? And, 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 and I'm sorry, one, do I have that one faith that he gives me? Am I baptized in the body? And, and, and do I look up and put God, the Father of all, above it all? Amen. I mean, because this is, this is really, this is, this is Paul showing the Trinity at work. Yes. This is yes. God trying to work in your life. And, 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 and he starts it once again. He just asks you to maintain it. That's He'll right. begin it in you. Just continue it in your life. That's right. That's right, because God did put it there. Amen. I mean, the Holy Spirit's there. He's there. We, the, the amount of the Spirit of God people see in you depends upon the amount of yourself that you've gotten out of the way. Amen. Right? Because, see, when you're strong, then the Spirit can't be strong. So when you're weak, the Spirit can be strong because the less of you, more of Him. Right? We, we've got to let the Spirit of God 
come out and through us, and we've got to allow God to be God in us. Amen. And see, I, I think that, that sometimes we, we, we try to contain things or constrain it or whatever and not, not allow God to be God in our lives. And, and that, that can be a, a scary thing at times, but we have to understand and realize that we're, we're in the body of Christ, that this Holy Spirit of God is in us, and we have hope. Amen. We have the hope, the greatest hope that there ever is, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's, it's an overcoming hope. Amen. An overcoming hope. And so I, I just, you know, I, I can't help but, but encourage everyone tonight, y'all, when you leave here tonight, remember, walk worthy of the calling. Man, it's a powerful Amen. thing. The calling of God is a powerful thing. And we're all called to be believers. Amen. I mean, we're all, you know, we've all been, been, been called by God. You know, I will give you the ability to have eternal life through Christ Jesus. Amen. I mean, I'll give you the ability to be forgiven. I'll give you the ability to be cleansed. I'll give you the ability to be washed. I'll give you the ability to be sanctified. I'll give you the ability to love one another. I mean, I'll give you all of that. All you've got to do is, is surrender to me and allow me. To be God, walk worthy of the calling. We're called to be united in him. And I I think that's just a, it's a powerful, powerful thing. I know we're about out of time tonight, I'm sure. But um, but I'll go ahead, Brother Joey, if you want to go ahead and close us with a word of prayer tonight, wrap it all up, whatever. Put a bow on it, maybe. I'll do, um, I'll do my best, yes, amen. sir. I, I, amen. I, God, that's one thing you don't have to do with God's word is, is no. defend it. It, no. it, it. You let it loose. It's like a line. That's right. I think that's what Spurgeon said. It's like a line. You just let it loose. You know, it will right. defend itself. That's right. Um, this is just something we're called to live out, guys. Amen. And, amen. And, and, dear Lord Jesus, thank you, God, for your word through Paul, yes. Lord God. And, and dear Lord Jesus, putting uh, doctrine and, 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 uh, and walk together. Yes. Lord God, he's combining. He's telling us, Lord Jesus, this is how, the what we should do. Amen. Lord God, we should never ask, Lord God, I, I, you never showed me how to do anything, Lord God. It, it, this is something a lot of times we cry out, but Lord God, Paul was laying in it down yes, for us, Lord God. Yes. Let us have humility, Lord God. Let us, have, let us be gentle, Lord yes. God. Let us, let us have patience, yes. Lord God. Let us bear with each other Amen. with love, Lord yes. God. This yes. is what you've put in us, started, Lord God. Let us maintain it through your word. Let us Amen. maintain it through your strength and power, yes. Lord God. This is, this is nothing we, we have to fight for ourselves, Lord God. You're fighting for us. Amen. We just have to make the decision to walk it out, Lord God. That's right. Lord Jesus, know that we can persevere through, the, through these things, Lord God, that, that, that is our base. But through Amen. Jesus Christ, Lord yes. God, I, I just pray for church to unify, Lord God. Yes. Paul is trying to bring the church together. And, Lord God, yes. I pray Thank that we can Lord. put our differences aside. Yes. Lord God, that we can love each other, Lord Jesus. And know, Lord God, that we're a part of that one body. Amen. Lord God, with that That's one right. hope, Lord That's Jesus, right. and that of that calling you've given us all. Let us walk out, Lord God. Hold that calling high. Lord God, you tell us that it's holy, Lord God, and yes. it's heavenly. Yes. Lord God, I just pray in Jesus' name tonight, Lord God. As we leave here tonight, be with us, God, yes. in your strength and your power, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, well, thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us for our Wednesday night roundtable. I pray that this teaching has blessed you and encouraged you. And I also want to remind you that we have a live worship service on Sunday mornings at 1030 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube. And if you can't catch it live, you can always catch the replays throughout the week. Now I just ask that you be encouraged this week, that you be blessed, and I pray that you experience the peace of God, the presence of God, and the blessings of God in all that you do throughout the week.